Okay, so this is our safety orientation and safety induction. But before going to the proper safety induction, safety orientation, so I am Sutero, Fungsino Junior, safety engineer of RCC and our safety supervisor in the other room, Mr. Saul Shamari. Okay, so any problems regarding to safety issues, okay? Safety requirements, safety compliance, or any safety rules and regulations you did not understand, just call us. Okay? So, this time I will be able to give you my number. Okay. Take your phone 0 5 0 7 1 5 7 5 5 Seven. Okay. And then just call me, and I will save your number also. Okay. So after saving my number, our numbers. Okay. So you will call us for any safety related issues. Okay. Okay. okay, if you encountered safety problems in your workplaces, okay? But before that, we will go directly to the safety orientation topics. Okay, so if you have other workers in the coming days, or you have only these guys there, you have to add people or not? For now? No, no. So permanent people, there are 13 or 14? No, 14. So this 14 people already inducted there. Okay? Yeah. Kalas. Okay, so we go first to the contents for the safety induction. First mandatory PPE. Okay? So no problem because your people already kalas discussed yeah. these safety topics for the safety orientation. Okay? So mandatory PPE. So, safety helmet, safety shoes, safety glass, and the mask. Okay? So, you wear that every time in the plant process area. Don't remove. Okay? Don't forget. Daily, daily, alatun. Okay? If you come from your company and then go to our plant. So, if you don't wear that, we have the right to issue a verbal warning, secondary warning, safety notice for you. Or... Since we don't have the right to directly issue your warning letter because you are not a permanent contractor with us, we need to deliver you to our plant director, okay? And you will be the one to give what kind of disciplinary warning for your team or for you if you commit safety violations and you did not follow the safety rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. Or you did not follow the safety requirements imposed by uh, safety department. You understand? Okay, so number two, traffic management flow. So if you have a car and then your company has car or any heavy equipment like this, okay, it should be registered for the government. Have Istimara like this, registration copy, insurance copy like that. And all the drivers must have driver's license approved by the labor, Saudi labor. Okay, yeah. like that. And your heavy equipment operators have the enough experience and also approved by the Saudi labor. Okay, and have external or third party training, which is, for example, the Velocity certification or Velocity ID, mm -hmm. so that they are really authorized, competent, and know how to operate those heavy equipment. Okay, without that, uh, licenses, certificates, not allowed to no, no. operate in our plan. Especially our safety supervisor in the morning called one guy, okay, operating the crane mm -hmm. without driver's license. Okay, then we plan to kick him out from the plan, of course. Okay, like that. You understand? Yes. Because he know already a procedure, but but he still violate the procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay like that and then please park your uh, light vehicles in that significant parking area there okay 
there near the sales office and then you can park also your uh, light vehicles in the plant process area there in the designated area but if your work area is very uh, far from the designated area just park in the office space and uh, you know open space area then the principle is common sense you will not obstruct other you know vehicles or you will not uh, obstruct other motorists like that so that to avoid any uh, property damages in the plant process area you mm -hmm. understand or same parking always to have that so enough space to park mm -hmm. the plant process is very wide you do not park very near on the you know machines equipments or running work equipment like this so problem okay we really so many hazards also our specific hazards are dusts, hazards, okay? <clears throat> like that, so don't uh, park nearby those dusts release area, especially the packing, you know, packing plant, cement plant, uh, you know, clicker silo, like that, okay? Okay, number three, emergency exits and assembly points. So in case of any emergency, you know, typhoon, earthquake, fire, a big fire, a big explosion. So you need to follow the uh, evacuation procedure, emergency evacuation procedure. It's here. Okay, but I don't have to discuss you one by one. Okay, in detail, I will go directly to the main point. Okay, go to the emergency exits. When you hear the alarm sounding, ooh, like that, okay. Stop your job immediately, okay. Remove the power sources shut off power sources so need to plug out okay the cable the mail sockets in the outlets you know like right there switch off like that meaning to say de-energized or shut off the power sources and then leave the area peacefully and calm okay do not run do not panic go to the exit door okay emergency exit door and then bring with you your people also Okay, or call them that all of you guys will go to the assembly points safe assembly points and we have so many safe assembly points in different locations okay in the admin building technical building in the bus hall okay in the plot process area you, you have we have assembly points go there okay and take down the attendance of your people one two three four five six seven eight, nine, ten. and somebody lost then report to your manager and then you coordinate with us safety. Maybe they were uh, trapped to the, you know, to the damaged equipment or collapsed structures during emergency, especially the earthquake, like that, or everything. Explosion, so body, somebody's missing, or casualties. You understand? That's the purpose of our head count during emergency situation. But if only accident only, like injury here for one person like that okay report immediately to the safety department you don't have your own safety officer no okay. if you don't have safety officer coordinate with us call our number okay and then if you know the number of our nurse then call him but you are we are very lucky that we have so many emergency contact points in our uh, safety bulletin board okay in different places like admin building also Technical building, so you might send them to building there, that process area, uh, workshops. We post emergency contact numbers, just uh, phone book the number of the nurse. Okay, and then call him directly if there's an injury. Call him first and then baden safety because we need to make a report. But if there's no injury, let's say for example fire, there's no damages, there's no injury, call safety directly. Okay. Because injury is different. Injury have wound, you know, cut, uh, abrasion, fractures, uh, finger injury, head injury, head injury, okay, and uh, cut of the bones or fatality or we don't know. Somebody died like that. Report immediately. Okay? In that case. Quick reporting, huh? Okay? Immediately reporting so that we can uh, do the final incident and accident report do it 24 hours within 24 hours the circulation of the accident information and the final report 
we need to finalize that because we need to conduct investigation also. We need to investigate with why it happened, okay? Who is responsible, why it happened, what is the main causes of the accident. And after that, we need to have the uh, road cause analysis. We can come up with uh, preventive measures, corrective measures that it will not happen again. You understand? That's why that's the purpose of our accident report. You understand? So that's it, okay? Number three, the significant smoking area. We have so many smoking area. I think there's 12 smoking areas in the blood process area that I've been doing like that. Okay, so don't smoke anywhere. It's a violation to safety policy. Again, you issue warning letter. If you will not follow, then we will turn over you to the blood director again and again. Because we don't have uh, the right to issue warning letter with the, uh, you know, temporary contractors. You understand? That runs to weeks, months only working. We have the right for our permanent contractor. Mm -hmm. Permanent meaning years, two years, three years. But you guys are not working with us permanently. Okay, our procedure only is for permanent contractors, not for the temporary contractors. So how can we discipline you? If you really commit unsafe acts, okay, or unsafe conditions, unsafe behavior at sites. So, you understand? So the best way is to turn over to the plant director, and then if you are not satisfied with your performance, then we can uh, terminate you from our plant because you have a poor performance in safety, like this. P poor performance in your pr productivity, oh, like this. Okay, we can change other contractors mm -hmm. if you are not meeting our requirements. You understand? Mm -hmm. But we'll never reach to that point. So we will manage in the you know the internal okay unless the problems will become big okay but you should follow our safety rules and regulations guidelines and policies and procedures okay we have restricted or controlled area if your job is uh, doing this particular work scope of activities then you will not go to another area like this do not touch anything there especially the running facilities running equipment the push buttons, so any manual controls of the fire alarm control panel, fire alarm systems like this. So it will create alarm and everybody will go out. Problem. Mm. Okay, just focus on your workplace. So do not touch anything. Do not operate anything, any equipment or any facilities. If you are not authorized to do so, okay, focus on your area. Okay, like that. You understand? because you are only designated for the particular uh, scope of work contracted by us, okay? Like that. That's restricted and controlled area, okay? Very clear, huh? Mm -hmm. So storage area, all your materials must be stored properly, okay? Away from the access, away from your specific work area because it can produce hazards and risks, specifically sleep, trip, and fall hazards. You understand? It will uh, obstruct and disturb or block your people who go to the access and the sleep, trip, and fall will be there, okay? Not only that, if you are working in an ele elevated area and there's no proper housekeeping, your materials are not stored properly and safely, it will become a falling object downward. So falling object hazards and the risks will be hit. Injuries, <coughs> body injuries, like again, injury accidents will be happening for them. So we need to control, okay? We need, to, if we know already the hazards, if we spot the hazards immediately, we correct immediately without delay. So that's safety all about. We don't need to delay and prolong the problem, especially if it can kill a person, and if it can uh, lead a person to dangerous or harmful situation. You understand? We need to prevent as much as we can, okay? Especially if you are the supervisor, you have the room to correct immediately without delaying the problem. Okay? Like that. So, store properly your materials. Okay? Number five, energy and water conservation. You, you, did not, you will not waste any energy sources from the plug from the company. For example, uh, uh, electrical sources, electrical power sources, uh, like energy, water, okay? If you will not use it anymore, then close the valve for the water pipeline, right? Because you need also potable water for your job sometimes, okay? But never use the fire water 
pipeline ha? because that is for emergency only you need water i know you need water for your job okay use the potable water pipeline but of course you have to ask permission for the mechanical utility utility guys for that coordinate with them first before using or touching any valves there okay you understand for the water supply of your work in case you need water so do not waste water energy electrical energy or any you know company resources okay like that and then we have fire safety provisions we have fire extinguishers, the chemical dry powder extinguishers, okay? Use that to stop fire, combustible fires in the Okay, fire caused by the wood, like this, the plastics, the cartoons. We have that available in the specific plant process area. But if it is not available, call safety department, okay? We can provide for you, but really 100% sure it's there. Use your eyes to see and then borrow it for the meantime to stop the fire occurrence, okay? Especially all fire started with a little occurrence before it will become big then, stop it immediately, okay? You know already the procedure for the, how to stop a fire? You know the procedure how to stop the fire? Mm -hmm. Face a fire? Very easy, just uh, follow the pass, okay? Pass, okay? Pull the safety pin like that, the first thing is your safety pin right, like that. Aim the nozzle to the pile, okay, and sweep side by side like this, okay. You understand? Yeah. Like that. Pass procedure only. You understand? Okay. After sweep, you should squeeze the nozzle before sweeping the file. Okay. Pass. Don't forget for that. Okay. And then not only that, the first thing is if you are working inside the substations. MCC rooms, okay. Then we have the CO2, carbon dioxide for electrical fires. And we have also the FM200 to stop the fire, okay. And then FM200 is attached in our fire alarm control panel. So, automatic system, okay. And then we have also manual system. It depends, but we have automatic to really stop the fire if the fire will be detected by our smoke detectors. It detects just like that. All you have to do is to report. Because that's automatic system. Report to the safety department that there's really a fire. Anyway, it will alarm. Okay? But you have also to report to the safety department immediately. So that we can send our firefighters, we have fire truck here, to stop the fire. It, it will become B. And after that, we make a fire accident report. So, report immediately. Okay? That's a fire safety provisions. If you work to the crude oil, we have a fire, you know, we have spray systems, water spray systems there to cool all the tanks, okay? And then the fire will stop also in case of a fire. Especially flammable fluids and liquids. Uh, spray, fire provision safety requirement is very important. So we have there the crude oil, okay? Like that. And also in the fuel tanks there, in the line one, line two, spray. Water spray systems are uh, you know installed there. You understand? All you have to do is to report on it. Okay? And if you found anything wrong with our fire safety provisions, then report also to safety. Mm -hmm. This is uh, you know everybody's responsibility. Okay? Safety is everybody's responsibility. Okay, we have workplace safety monitoring and safety inspection. Actually, this is the main focus of the safety officers, safety engineers at site, but you have also the role. The, the responsibility and obligation to check first your workplaces from any hazards and potential risks, okay? To protect your people, your workers from injury, okay? Especially the safety are not always with your team from starting your job until finished, okay? We rotate for different uh, plans, different locations, and we cannot see everything, okay? That's why you need to report to us, or much better, correct any unsafe conditions, unsafe actions, and unsafe behaviors to your people on the spot. Okay? We need to solve immediately. No need to delay. Okay? Then if you need our help, then we can help you immediately. Having our safety recommendations and safety suggestions to solve the problems immediately. Okay? What I mean is you need to conduct work safety inspection in your place, even though you are not a safety officer, a safety engineer, just to protect your people from injury. 
and also to protect also your equipment if, if you bring equipment to our plant. Building machines, okay, grinding machine. So you need to check the condition, if it's okay or not. If bad condition, damages, have so much defects, they do not use it. You understand? There's no grounding, they put grounding for your rolling machines. Okay? Check the cables. You understand? The cable management must be proper and in a safe order, in good condition. Okay? Follow the electrical safety requirements also. Okay? For that. You understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So use proper walkways and this is self explanatory. Of course, if you will go to your workplaces every day, every afternoon, dili dili ala to, you have to check that rasta and the access to be safe. Clear access. Okay, safe access. Do not do the shortcut method, okay? Just like a spider man climbing there. Use the proper access. If you found any floor or pathway that is open, then cover it properly with, a, let's say, a metallic uh, plate or a plywood, strong plywood with thickness enough, thickness so it will not fall, it will not break, like the common sense, okay? Cover the hole. Again, if you have problem also with that, call with your uh, in charge, RCC, our people, to coordinate what's the best solution for that, okay? Then by then, if you cannot do also the solution, call the safety department. The, the philosophy here is that if you can really solve on the spot the safety problems, then bingo, there's no problem anymore, okay? The safety will be happy for that, okay? Because sometimes they will call us and then the problems are just very minor, very easy to correct, and they cannot correct. So that's not be the case. If we can solve the problem immediately by our initiative, then do it. Okay? Like that. You are there not only for production, productivity, you are there also to protect your people from, you know, hazards, risks, injuries. So it's your safety responsibility also directly to your people. Okay, you have the safety accountability of your people as per OSHA standards concerned. Okay? Safety department are just here to ensure the safety compliance has been done. Safety rules and regulations has been done. But since you are the parent or the father of the group, just like a family, then protect your children first. Just like that. Your workplace is just like your home. Okay, your people and your workers is just like your children. Since you are the father, protect them from injuries. Just like that also in working to apply your company. Okay? You understand? So you have the safety responsibility first. The safety will just the safety team will just ensure that the safety guidelines, rules and regulations has been followed and the safety requirements. Okay. It's not our job every time to correct every time unsafe like that, like that. So we are not a police every time that we see bad, that we catch. It's not like that. Okay. We are more on the advice, reporting, suggestions, and then create and uh, establish safety control measures that you cannot make because of your limitation. That's the time. Especially engineering control. Needs cause, needs a meeting to the plant director, mm. then we can do that. But most of the times, it's, it's not more on engineering control. It's more on the, you know, administrative control that's missing signages, you understand? Only uh, housekeeping, only cable management, it's just like that. Very easy to correct, really, based on my experience here. But the problem is, is the supervisor foreman don't know how to co correct, even though how basic, how simple the problem really is to work safety. For example, only hand gloves, like this. You, all, you call safety for this, it's very, you know, it's not logical. Only hand gloves, only safety gloves. The supervisor can do that. Okay? You understand my point? That's very, very uh, basic. PPE is the last sort of defense. Meaning to say, we have so many controls in safety, but the PPE is the last. Because it cannot protect completely the workers against hazards. Okay? It should be the safety policies, safety rules, engineering controls, like this. You know engineering controls? 
the machine designed for safety that it has warning devices to stop immediately if there is a problem. Okay? For example, too much vibration, too much noise. So that means your mm. equipment are not running smoothly. So it will just stop immediately without causing injury to the people operating that machine. So that's not PPE, right? That's engineering control. Mm. So higher than PPE. Even though the objects will fall to your head, you can still attend injury, especially if the helmet will be broken. You understand? Okay? You understand? Mm -hmm. But if you cover the floor, all cover, all objects will not fall on the ground. You understand? So that is more important compared to the putting of the helmet. You understand? Mm -hmm. That's why the helmet, wearing, safety tissues, PPE, are primary prevention, partial prevention, not really the complete prevention. That's why PPE is protective only. Protection, not prevention really, sorry. Protective or protection. Prevention meaning really you need to prevent from happening. Okay? You understand now the difference between protection and prevention? You understand English, right? I'm talking too fast? No. Okay. Now we go to the okay responsibility of the senior management of course our senior management or your senior management of course you're working here we provide you the company policy safety policy safety requirements and you should follow okay your role is to follow uh, what we had given you this safety policy safety rules like that like that, blah 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 okay and our senior management giving us the safe equipment safe facilities, safe work area. All we have to do is to maintain the safety of those equipment, work area, like that, okay? You are a manager or a supervisor? Yes, I'm manager. Yeah, that's the, the purpose of our management. And we need to maintain the safety of our equipment, workplace, and our people. Because the company are providing for us that. Safe plant equipment, safe facilities, safe technology, safe equipment, safe machine, safe procedures for our people, safe methodologies how to execute our job to avoid any injuries of our people. Okay? Like all we have to do is to implement that properly in our workplace. Okay? Like that. There's no shortcut at all. There's no omission, meaning there's no escape from that procedure. If you escape something wrong, an accident will be happening also. Okay? Like that. Employees and employer duties just the same on what I mentioned, but here the employee really follows safety rules and regulations directly. If you don't follow, then we will issue warning letter for you guys. Safety disciplinary action, okay? And then you should attend the safety trainings, safety toolbox talks if we conduct that on site. Normally we have our trainings, then you will also attend, okay? If it is necessary to attend, it depends on the scope. Okay, if it is really related to your job for the moment. Because we need to analyze, we need to study what particular training uh, relevant for your group. Okay, for example, if the people are working in an excavation, then why we will give them a training regarding working at height? It doesn't match. So we need a training for them regarding excavation safety. That's what. I mean, okay? If the training is uh, relevant for you, then you will send your people there to attend. You understand? Mm -hmm. We have training plan, we have training metrics also. Uh, different training subjects in our in-house training every month. Since you are not a permanent contractor, then just see the notices in the safety board, bulletin board, or in the emails, if you have emails like that, then we can include you. But for now, we are focusing for the main shutdown, the plant two process area. Then we cancel our safety training at this point in time. And after the main shutdown in line two, we resume back our training. Okay? Like that. We prioritize the shutdown works for now. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, participation of employee toolbox meeting, you should do your toolbox meeting even though we will not see for you for that. Do the toolbox meetings every morning prior to work. Uh, talk about safety instructions, okay? To make them safe, of course, or to execute their job safely. And then your production, productivity, your progress, your target, and the quality of their work. 
how they carry their task in quality also. Because this quality, productivity, and safety were always uh, uh, interconnected with each other. If you work safely, quality also will be there. And then your output will be okay. You don't have to go back to zero. Because if you don't work with quality, your output fast jildi jildi, and then it's not quality, we will go back if it's poor quality. Because you did not meet the desired quality of your output necessary for your accomplishment. You understand? Okay. Then safety will be there always. This productivity, quality, and safety goes together. Do not omit. Okay, one over the other. Okay? But safety is the most priority because it will deal with the life of the people. Okay? If the people will get injured, who will do the productivity? Who will do the output if the people is sick? Have injury. So that's why normally all over the world is thinking safety is number one. But actually, this is all same level only in actual. Only in that sense that we are dealing with the lives of the people, just like a doctor, a nurse. We're dealing the lives of the people. We need to protect them so that nobody will get killed. Okay? Nobody will die or will have a major injury somewhere along the way in your scope of works in our plan. It is our main priority because so we have this all everything, we record everything, okay, like this part of our city documentation, okay. And then we go to the refusing unsafe works. Now, as a manager, as a supervisor, you don't need to give unsafe procedure to your people or uh, any instructions that will lead them to uh, hazardous situation, harmful situation, dangerous situation. So you will be, uh, you know, terminated from that. Okay, from the project. Okay, because you are here to guide your people safely, not to to be in a dangerous situation. And then the workers has the right to unsafe, has the right to refuse the unsafe work. Okay, you also have the right to refuse unsafe work by your model, because you have also your model. Okay, you understand? This is really uh, the legal requirement. All workers have the right to refuse unsafe work as per OSHA standards. OSHA Act of 1970, and it has been applied all over uh, U.S. territory and Middle East, because uh, other countries also not following OSHA, okay? But most of the time, OSHA will follow, and the U.K. safety standards, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just the same, normally. Generally, pattern the same, similarly equal, okay? You understand? Okay, now we go to the hazardous, all right, minimum safety acceptable standards, meaning to say, Safety requirements at a minimum level, 100% follow. Maximum safety standards, we need to think that because of limitation sometimes. Okay, or practical safety approach some, sometimes. You understand? But for the minimum, acceptable safety standards we need to follow. Okay? You understand my point? Because there are things also in plan that we need to balance between actual and, uh, you know, the safety standards imposed by OSHA and the safety standards imposed by our plan. Okay, and then we need to deal with a you know, meeting, okay, with these guys. What are the best solution to correct in order for the people to be safe? Okay, especially those are control measures that require cost, in which we can also do that without cost. Okay, our protection is the same level, but our Control measures doesn't involve cost. So home, you should prefer this one. Okay, because there's no cost at all. It's easy to manage. For example, putting signages, putting procedure, uh, one, two, three, four procedure that people will follow. And we need to give them a warning letter if you are not too properly to safety, you will not follow safety. Those are really more good compared to those buying things, costly, as our, you know, as our protection to people. We need to balance, okay? You understand? Mm -hmm. Administrative control measures are good. So it is not on the top, but at least it is good. You understand? So physically, we need to eliminate the hazards first. Eliminate, you know, physically eliminate. Okay? That's the best solution. But there are times we cannot eliminate. That's why this uh, PPE will come, administrative control will come and then this engineering control will come 
because sometimes you cannot eliminate because your job, for example, uh, if your people is working at high, you cannot do on the ground because your work scope is there. That's too many, too much hazards at the top compared to the ground. So you cannot say, I will transfer my job on the ground. Okay? So that my people will be safe. So that's impractical because your work scope is on the top. You understand? You cannot eliminate the hazards. But you can control and reduce the hazards by following the other safety control measures I mentioned a while ago. Okay? Safety policy procedures, safety guidelines, putting signages, engineering controls, okay? instructions to the people, safety instructions to the people, like this. Okay? Now we go to the work stoppage. Work stoppage must be issued if the situation can lead the people to imminent danger, meaning it has the chance to kill a person. That's the time the safety will stop immediately without question. Because it will lead them to a very dangerous situation. Okay? A imminent danger to life, to human life. Okay? We issue work stoppage for them immediately huh? without any gear gear, without fighting, like, because we need to save them, protect them. Okay? Minimum safety, safety standards, the same as minimum safety acceptable standards. Okay? Company policy, very simple. The HR will uh, have that policies. For example, never sleep at work time, like this. Okay? Uh, don't be late in work. Okay? Like that. Do not escape from work if it is under eight hours. Sometimes we'll do Alibaba. They will go home, sleep, and the, they abuse the time. Okay? During the punch in and punch out. Uh, cheating the time. Even though they're not working, but still their, you know, their payroll is okay. So, that's not allowed. That's cheating. That's against the procedure of the company policy. Okay? If the work is in hours, you will work in hours. Okay? If, if that's a break time, then it's a break time. You don't have to do another thing for the break time. You don't have to sleep. Or you don't have to watch a movie. Because that is working time. That's company policy. Okay? Not only that, if you can damage the uh, company properties, then you have to pay for that. Mm. Because you damage intentionally. Okay? Unless it is already damaged, okay? then the company will help you to replace the computer, replace your printer. Like this. But if you damage that intentionally, you pay for that. Because of your carelessness and negligence. That's company property. That's part of company policy. Okay? And now we go to the safety procedures. We have a lot of safety procedures in our cabinet plan. Okay? From hot work, from working at high, excavation, lifting operation, uh, hazardous release of gases, solids and liquids, low tow, lock out and tag out for working in live electricity. We have there. Okay? Just call us if you are confused. Okay? Then we can guide you for that. But for now, we will uh, take photos of your unsafe of your people and we will submit to the plot director. Especially major unsafe conditions in your work area and major unsafe actions and behavior of your people. Unsafe actions meaning they are sitting on the rail and they will fall and you really will die. You work at high and there's no harness, there's no handrail, there's no guardrail. Like this, that's a major safety violation. You understand? And a lot more. I don't have to explain anything, okay? Like this. Okay, we have the provision for shutable machine tools or equipment vehicles. Like this. For this, again, check the condition of your equipment, work equipment, process equipment, tools, machines necessary for your job. That's the first thing to do. Check, inspect. If there are damages or defects, then report to your budir and then consult to the responsible parties to repair, okay, for that particular damages. And then if cannot repair it totally, then replace it. Good condition, tools, machine, and equipment. Replace, replacement, or substitution with a good physical conditions, tools, machines, and equipment. So that your people that will be using your tools, machines, and equipment will be safe. There will be no finger injury, an injury, and there's no burns for the fire and explosion. Because sometimes equipment also will explode. Okay? Like that. Especially today, it's very hot. Take note for that. Hot temperature is very issue today because heat can cause fire and explosion. Overheating. Okay, overheating of the tools, machines, and equipment under running for a long period of time will undergo overheating process. Take note for that also. Okay? 
Sometimes you cannot touch. You just throw close your board. Okay? Like that. You can only see that, but it's smoking a little bit. That's the time that there's an overheating. Okay? You see your eyes. After not only touch. Because problem. You understand? Okay. Now you go to the mechanical handling above 25 kilograms to the forklift. Use the forklift. Use the what else? Uh, crane to lift an object from lower ground to higher elevation if it's uh, too much heavy. Check the capacity, the safe working load of that particular object to be carried from the top. If it is more than 25, and our standard here, more than 25 kilograms. Okay, but if you can still carry that by a group of people, you can, but make sure they are carrying that safely. Okay, with the hand gloves, okay, proper way of manual handling, okay, foot together and bend properly because it will bend your spinal column and then breaking your bones at the back, causing you to undergo back pain, like that bone fractures again injury will come due to improper manual handling okay do it but improper manual handling and do it in a team with ppe all the time okay carry it with a team but if it's not possible really you have the mechanical equipment to carry it, to lift all your materials going to the top elevation you understand okay now we have the dust and noise control so this is respiratory control Okay, and the hearing protection. For the hearing protection, uh, we are advising the people to wear this air muffs for, okay, for cement meal, raw meals, or the uh, equipment, work equipment or process equipment that produces uh, a little bit high noise. Okay, and then if you want really a double hearing protection system, then you can just wear the air plugs inside plus this. But if it is not very noisy at all, just wear the air plugs. Okay? Because constant exposure will lead to permanent hearing loss from your left ear and babbins, right ear, and then no more. What will happen if kalas left ear and then kalas other ear? So be careful. Put air plug. Okay? That's hearing conservation. The hearing loss problem also. You cannot hear anything. What will happen? You cannot do properly your job, right? So you will be uh, totally uh, not productive if you lose your hearing, okay? So wear air plugs, air muffs, bring air plugs if your company has air plugs. Our noisy areas are a lot. Okay? We have the pressure area, cement mill area, room mill area, like that. And the power plant area. So many, uh, a lot of voltages there. 24,000 kilovolts, too much really for the noise okay be careful as i told you that you will never go to other areas that you are not authorized to to do that Just focus on your job okay like this. and then we have the housekeeping standard housekeeping standard will be uh, implemented before during after the work sometimes no during only before and after the work okay but take note if it can obstruct and disturb your people to accomplish their job safely or completely, then you have to do the housekeeping in between, or in the duration of your job, during your job. It doesn't mean only before and after the job, but mostly they will do after, but that's wrong. Usually that's before and after, and also during. But sometimes they will not do the during, okay? But sometimes due to so many jobs, you do anything, Materials can obstruct and disturb you guys to work properly. That's why you need to conduct housekeeping in during also your working hours, not only before and after. You understand? It's for housekeeping implementation. Okay, now we go to the chemical storage and waste management. If you have flammable substances, oil, petrol, diesel, cover it properly. Cover it properly so that there will be no spills on the ground level and it will produce all contamination and by then it will produce pollution to the land air and water okay so please decontaminate if you cannot control well the small spillages or wastages because you will do that sometimes manually like this right 
understand? But it's better to have a hose pack to do that. Hose pack like that so that movement to like this. You understand? And then always wear the proper hand gloves, chemical hand gloves, rubber gloves for that. Wear the mask and the face shields or what we call the goggles with spectacles. Goggles. The, the, the large area facial mm -hmm. not only that because if the chemicals will flush to your face then you will burn okay burn hazards you understand burn hazards be careful also the PPE must be there always okay and then waste management you should segregate properly the solid liquid and gas waste here we don't have gas wastes Focusing only for the solid and liquid wastes. Segregate that properly in your area first because we need to reduce the waste at the source first. Okay? So we need to segregate and isolate properly in according, classify the waste according to types and then isolate them before collection. Our people will collect that, okay? And then dispose that properly to the designated disposal area. Or wastes area or as much as possible do not throw anywhere your wastes even though that's only a chop chop wastes like uh, you know, the cola okay cola the you know the caboose whatever so be responsible with yourself starts with yourself huh in uh, proper waste management all it all starts with ourselves safety starts with ourselves really all i can say is that only if the people will just think Safety starts with themselves. There's no really after the zero, okay? Like because it's the people will really act, okay? Meaning to say, if the situation or the condition are very unsafe, if there's no people there, nobody will die, okay? But if there's people there due to the unsafe conditions and then he's very careless, they, they just somebody will die. So that means through his unsafe actions, right? Okay. So really, unsafe actions, ir errors mistakes, human factors are 98% plus to cause accident. Okay? Human actions, human behavior, mistakes of the people. Human factor always, not the machine. Because the machine, even though that's damaged for a long period of time, is if people are not operating that damaged machine, there will be no injury. Do you understand? Okay? Like that. And then if there's a damage, the people will troubleshoot, will repair that one if he knows the damage and then there will be no chance of you know damaging that equipment because the people that operates that will report that this damage we need to collect like that. again people okay if the people will see something wrong they will have to report again everything is dependent on the people because for the reason the machine and equipment has no life it has no brain cells they are programmed by human beings you understand? Designed by human being. Okay? So, if the human being designed it incorrectly, okay, wrong design, then there will be something wrong happening with the equipment, between the people and the equipment, if you operate that. Due to the specifications of the equipment and machine, it's not correct. Okay? During the design. So, still again, human factors, right? And then if it will become damaged, because that operator will not inspect the condition dili dili alato he's still using damage already still again it's the fault of the operator it's not fault of the machine okay because if you check properly you report immediately in its minor abnormalities it will not become a big abnormalities it will not cause damage see again people again is the source for that it's not really the machine you cannot blame the machine at least at all why because if you see that it's old already, then you have to buy another machine. See? But why you keep on staying that machine for a long time that's very old? So that means human. They don't buy. So who will buy? People. Okay? Purchasing department. Who are in the purchasing department? Still people. It's there. Who is the owner of this company? Still people. Like this. Who will uh, decide, decide for the budget? people again who will give the budget people again who will approve who will sign people again so it's human factors that causes 98 percent of the accident okay it's not the condition it's not the equipment it's not the machine everything can be uh, solved 
if the people will really take care of their own safety responsibility for yourself, to the tools, equipment, plants, everything around you. Okay? Like that. Okay. Now, we have the permit to work. Our permit to work is here, but uh, I gave the permit to work to your foreman and he filled up. But supposedly you will know this, not him. Okay? Just like this. I issue him already a permit, no problem. I will just discuss to you, but actually this is your role first, not him. Because you are the manager. You will be the one to get the permit to work system in the safety department. And then so that you can proceed the welding operation, cutting operation, confined space job, like that. You will obtain permit from us. But what happened, your foreman is doing that for you. Okay? Reverse. So for the next job, you will get permit here. But I issue already permit from your group. Check that out. Yeah. But they have to discuss. We issue number here. Okay. You, company, name, mobile number, and state the job description, what you are doing. Okay. The permit is a specific document, not transferable. If we issue this permit to line one, this is only applicable to line one. Then if you are trying to work in line two, then another permit will govern there. It's not the same. Okay? Like that. And now, we will put the day starting. Okay, we will put the department. We will issue this to the mechanical section. Okay, check. We have so many jobs. Five. One until ten. If your job is excavation, we will check excavation. If your job is hard work, we will check from part B. One, two, three, four. And then each have the safety requirements. Just check. Okay? In the first page. You understand? Be sure if you check, you implement. Because if you did not implement and provide the safety provision, the safety requirements, then it will be a problem for your people. It can cause accidents. That's why this is accident prevention tool. This permit to work system is really an accident and incident prevention tool. Okay? Because if you follow this completely, my friend, there will be no incidents and accidents. You understand? Not just not reading one by one. You should read one by one and put that in your workplace. For yes. example, hot work. Okay? Hot work equipment must be in good mm. condition. So you should check. How can you say that your equipment is in good condition? Okay, check that one. Meaning to say, uh, before you check, you observe the cable, the plug, the grounding terminals, the welding cable terminals, the parts of the welding machine, the switches, everything with the parts of the welding machines. So if they are damaged, then correct it and then try to repair. Call the electricians or mechanical person to repair. Like that. Okay? So meaning to say, if I see damage now in your group, meaning to say you are not following this one. And you check it. You check everything without implementing. Since you are the manager, you should also be particular for that. Okay? You just... Just instruct your supervisor and foreman to do the serious implementation of each safety requirement reflected and declared here in the Part B section of our permit. Not just a formality uh, philosophy. It should be a true and sincere philosophy following really the, what is really required for the safety of your group. Okay? Now, if your job is not follow uh, reflected here but it's critical and also hazardous you have to check number 10 others okay and you have to specify here number 10 is here others here you have to state what safety requirements you put one two. you will be the one to write already because it's not specified in the list here reflected in the various activities stated here okay there are instances like especially electrical people Okay? Usually, their job not found here. And they will put here. Check and they will, they will state what kind of job. Specifically. Okay? Because this, these are only nine. But there are a lot of jobs. Millions of jobs. If you try to one by one, one, two, list. Even inspection is already a job. Okay? Like that. But there are jobs no longer needed a permit. Okay? It depends on the situation. That's why you check this to classify. If it's in here, then bingo. Follow this. Okay?
Okay? But normally, permit will be issued. Okay? Normally, meaning to say, you get this permit really. Okay? Dili, dili, ala to. Okay? Now, here in the signatory, you sign if you think your workplace is already safe. Okay? Then, us, we will sign if after we check your area is already cleared from hazards and rest and it's already meeting the safety requirements and we will sign here. We need to say, if you do a job stated here, in the first page, then you have to inform safety department. Okay? But anyhow, you will obtain permit, right? You don't have to inform sometimes because if you are here, that means you have job. But since your job is uh, major, major, you have to call sometimes, you need to do a meeting like this because you need other requirements. Except for it's very difficult to put a scaffold in that particular situation, then you need the advice of safety how to do that, like it again. But if it is manageable for you, then no need to call safety as long as you will be here and obtain permit. Kalas. Because you will follow the safety requirements. Even if the safety will not uh, go in your area, if you follow this automatically, this all, no, nothing happens. Okay? Even though this is, these are only words, I can uh, like this in a trash can. Okay? But the content is more powerful than my mouth. You understand? The contents are powerful than my mouth because these are legal documents, legal safety compliance. So if there are accidents will be happening, then this permit must be investigated first. Where is your permit documentation that these guys are authorized to perform the job? Number one. And then number two, what will happen? Why you do this? Why you do that? Investigation will be there. Okay? See, imagine you will check first the documentation, okay? Just like in a criminal, crimen, killing, in a crimen situation outside, not only for work, right? If somebody kill a person, okay, they will check everything also. Okay? Not only the who killed this one, they need to conduct investigation properly by papers first. Okay? Like that. And then, renewal. We need to renew. Okay? For example, if you cannot finish your job in one day, we need to renew another, let's say, one week. You can estimate, right? I will put one week. We will put one week. One week here, okay. Then date started, time started, okay, and date finished. We cannot put yet date finished because you are not yet finishing the you know the job. So just put the last day of the week because I gave you one week, like that. And again, finish one week, renew again, revalidate again the, for another week. Maximum of one month only. It will never uh, you know valid after one month. For the purpose of this uh, extension and revalidation, it's just you are doing the same job all the time, the same scope, okay, in that particular area. Okay, but if you transfer to another area, let's say you go to the line three, to the line two, then another permit will do. That's why, guys, I advise you to put here uh, location, line two, you have to specify, polar area, comma, heat exchanger area, comma, cyclone area comma so that we we avoid to issue you so many permits and then you are doing the same thing you understand okay you are doing the same thing and so many papers how about putting in one uh, paper consolidate it anyhow you have the same job you understand my point so we can save the paper we can save also the time for the people because we have to sign here the workers in the third page here if you have 15 people to put signature sign here company signature id time started so it will take longer time you understand my point and if, if let's say if we issue you six permits in one area because you will go to a polar, polar another like this. What will happen for that time? It will consume them by just writing alone. Right? But the same scope of works. 
Okay, and the same general hazards will be there. The sparks, the mountain details for the building, like this, the sleep trip and phone. It's just general, always. Okay, unless there are other hazards, unless that are very specific that cannot be found in another area. And then you have to put the permit here or call the safety. Normally, the, the people are not doing that. Safety will always check, uh, you know, the, what are missing safety uh, hazards there, and then we will correct immediately. Okay? So we need to say the third page is agreeing that they are safe to work here. Because it says, uh, I fully understand the potential hazards and risks involved of this job, and I must ensure the safety of myself and my co-workers. Meaning if they are not agreeing with you to proceed the job, he found unsafe. He will clarify to you and correct the situation to make them safe. If he signed here, meaning he agreed. Okay? Like that. If he agreed, so something happened to him. So, no more question. Why you sign? That means you are working safely. Meaning to say, you are signing here, they are signing here because they are working safely. It doesn't mean they are signing here for their attendance. That they are work. Because this is not HR and time in time out for the salary. You understand? This is declaration for your time started job that your people are working safely before proceeding the job. This can help. Very, very adaptable because there are also, per, based on my experience now, there is also worker that will complain. He cannot proceed this, like this, like this. Uh, we are very thankful to those persons like that, okay? Because they protect themselves first. You understand? Okay, I will give you a copy and study for this if you have time. Then this. It's just very simple if you know how to understand English. Okay? Going back, still have risk assessment. We have the risk assessment, huh? The risk assessment is to control the risks. We have procedures there to follow. Never mind. Any, anyhow, we have the documents here. Okay, it's just like a job hazards analysis. Okay? If you encounter a problem, then you cannot uh, reduce the risks, then call us. I'll give you the number, right? Okay. And then risk is only about uh, controlling the risk, meaning to say you identify the hazards, and we need to control the risks by having the risk controls measure, okay? And then we have the confined space. Confined space is a work inside the cyclone, the beam, anything that has an enclosed opening. You understand? Opening that is not designed for human occupancy. And there's a limited and restricted opening, access, and egress. That's a confined space. Because normally, it is used for process, okay? That is not a home. Okay? The people will only be there during cleaning, maintenance, and shutdown. But that confined spaces or that vessel tanks are intended for the process, not for the people. You understand? That's why, that's why it's confined space. Not really useful for people to go inside. Not designed for human occupancy. And there's a chance of atmospheric uh, gases there carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, like this, and flammable fluids or liquids that can cause explosion and fire. Okay, carbon monoxide. That's why if your people are working on fence space, obtain permit from us, and I will conduct gas test for that. Okay, I have the gas test thing device here. It's here. I will conduct first before your people will go inside. Okay? Like that for the confined space. I am in the confined space. Okay? And then we give you the okay. Like this. The sign uh, the sign in sign out of the people. Okay. The sign uh, the sign in and sign out of the people. Okay. The date. Uh, for what date they will go in inside mm -hmm. the confined space. Uh, put the name of the people, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Time in, in the morning. Time out in the morning. Time in in the afternoon, time out in the afternoon, then body and signature on the other side. Okay? This will be done after the gases results are okay. Now our gases results uh, example is here. This one. Okay, I gave to you for in the morning, I discussed also. So we have the 
I'll conduct first the, the levels of the atmospheric gases, the carbon dioxide, the carbon monoxide, the volatile combustible matter, like that, everything, okay? And then I'll put the, record, the readings here. If abnormal, I will tell no work, work stoppage immediately, and I will call you and I will call our plant director. And normally, the manager of the mechanical is not allowed to work there because it's very dangerous for the presence of the gas, okay? And then, if it's okay, I will sign here. You will sign here. Your foreman, supervisor, or you, you will sign here. Okay, and then your people here also, name only. Okay, I put equipment name, cyclo, like this, heat exchanger, pipeline. Pipeline is also a confined space. When you go inside the pipeline diameter, huh? confined space. Okay, and also excavation uh, beyond 1.2 meters. Okay. You understand? And a lot of confined spaces. Not only that. Okay? Date and time. Enclosed spaces with a very small opening. That's a confined space. Okay? Like that. And you will sign there. So these are the attachments. It will do confined space. Okay. And then after that, working at height, safe working platform for body harness. So working at height, very easy. You need to provide safe working platform. Meaning, handrails, midrails, two boards, and the floor must be completely covered. Okay? You understand? Mm -hmm. And then the access must be safe, clear all the time, and very strong. It will not collapse. You understand? If it collapses, people will uh, go down, accident. Okay? Like this. And full body harness, I already mentioned, right? Above two meters. Okay? And clip on the strong, you know, anchorage points above shoulder okay always 100% tied off choose the very very strong and rigid anchor points okay you understand and then if your job is a roofing works roofing at the top you need to uh, implement the horizontal uh, pipeline another pipeline a horizontal lifelines okay, horizon, like a wire of sleeve and you'll attach there, and every time you will go there, you will like this, like this. Mm. Okay, because that's a rooftop job. Okay, it depends on the situation, but my point is you need to hook every time above shoulder so that you will never fall. This is a secondary prevention fall, secondary fall prevention. The first prevention is the complete platform with guardrail. Guardrail can prevent you from falling, right? Because there's a hundred meters, so that's the first. Sometimes, first prevention is not enough which is the guardrail system. We need to have secondary prevention to wait to the full body harness. Hook when the person died off. Okay? Understand? I know. Okay, my friend. We almost finished. Okay. For our injury, go. call the nurse for the first aid treatment, huh? And then body and report to see. We already discussed this one, Kalas. Okay. The stress management, not yet coming, and after his, uh, I think August, very hot, we need to implement again our stress management program. But for now, to go back to the basic, provide water, enough water to the people, calling fan to the people, provide that extra cold air, water, like that, okay? And then rest on the shaded areas, or rotation of the people, you understand? So that there will be no overexposure to the work, Okay, we need to rotate, rest, but in this guy, rest, like this, rotation, job rotation. So that we can limit the exposure for the people so that to avoid the uh, heat stress related injuries and illnesses, you understand? Okay, and then we have the incident investigation already discussed, report incident and incident immediately. We have the form here and we will give you the form, okay, like that, but report first immediately to safety department, okay, like that. Okay, action steps in the event of an accident. I told you already, right? What to do. Okay, and then emergency contact numbers are listed. I already also discussed in the boards. All, you can see have in the admin building, workshops like this. Okay, uh, that's all. And the last topic will be the COVID-19 health protocols. You need to wear the mask every time. Okay, uh, personal hygiene, wash your hands. With soap and we have the sanitation, sanitizer, liquid sanitizer. Wash your hands like this, and then 
better you will do the shower twice a day okay wash your hands before and after when you eat like that and avoid shaking hands apply distancing with your workers all the time or do not stay very close to your people long time okay you can do how many seconds of video you can away from him after that one okay and then drink uh, lemon juice something like that and fruits and vegetables to increase the levels of your antibodies to fight for the virus something like this okay that's all for health protocols for the COVID-19 and do not mask every time okay you understand if you don't feel well do not work just mm -hmm. inform your mother that you cannot work this day do not force to work because maybe you will cause trouble on the plant then we have related accident like that before and he died because of too much sugar and uh, he collapsed on the toilet so we advise not to work if you feel that bad in the morning when you wake up okay take your medicines first observe if it will uh, disappear or not if it's still hot there then go to the doctor okay that's the best because if you be here and work in bad condition not, not healthy then most also accidents okay problem you understand that's for covid 19 health protocols okay thank you so much for your did i take your picture already not yet i will take your picture for the record remove your mask Okay, so don't forget the permit to work system, huh? No, because it's in there that listed all the safety requirements. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Well, this is your ECAMA of your people. You already did this uh, scan by... This one? You can photocopy in your office only, huh? Yeah, no, if you want to more. For, uh, for I can, but you uh, still have to have your okay. copy. Okay. Okay. If you have a copy machine, then you can do... I have my number to you, huh? It's Miss Cord. Okay. okay, thank you so much. That ends our safety orientation. You have my number, no? Huh? You miss call me? Yeah, I'll let you miss call. Okay. I will say what's your first name? Osman. Mama Dusman. Huh? Mama Dusman. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Mama Dusman. Okay. That's a mechanical? Mechanical team? Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Everybody, thanks. Okay, thank you. Have you mask? Mask? Yeah, please, I want me one piece. Wait, I will give you. You have this one. Dusty. Thank you. Welcome.